and negotiation, etc., etc., through the United Nations, etc. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the other point I'd like to make is that, you know, so there's one corporal from the Israeli army that's being held who's legitimately uh, being held in an armed conflict, quite frankly, and yet there's thousands of uh, prisoners, political prisoners, including parliamentarians in Israeli jails. Are they going to release the thousands of prisoners as well? Yeah. Furthermore, what I would say is, because I'm just an observer, I believe in direct action, I believe there are things we can do. Mm -hmm. if, if Israel is serious about this, then I, I would say, let's add one more thing to the equation. Mm -hmm. Let us get thousands of international observers into Gaza, and at the same time that that corporal is released, let's see if Hamas might agree to that, and let's have thousands of international observer, observers in there long term, so that if there is another invasion, it won't just be Palestinian body parts all over the place and Palestinian blood. Let mm -hmm. there be some Western blood that's spilled with the Palestinians. Let them observe and let them collect evidence so that we don't have any questions as to whether there's war crimes or not. I would say that if Israel would agree to allowing thousands of, uh, of international observers in for the release of this soldier and Hamas agrees to that, mm -hmm. okay, then let's see what happens. But I always, I'm going to think that if they release this soldier what will happen is one rocket attack boom repeated the same old policy and then yeah. what now yeah. you've got nothing exactly exactly well talking about Israel setting conditions well they seem to be taking everybody on including the Vatican um, there's a headline in today's times online chief rabbinate of Israel cuts ties with the Vatican over Holocaust Bishop um, now, the Pope is doing his best to gather his flock, and there's a, a dissident group of Catholics who um, he's trying to get back into the, um, into the Catholic faith, one of whom, um, there are four bishops, but one of them has actually said that the Holocaust was exaggerated. It was not six million Jews dead, but about 300,000, and he also didn't believe that there were any gas chambers. Now, because this individual has been brought back into the Catholic faith, um, Israel has cut off ties with the Vatican. Do they have, I mean, it, to me, it's almost like there's an unquestioned assumption all over the globe that Israel has the right to hold the world to hostage over the basis of a, what I would call a, a Zionist assumption. Um, Two things. about what has happened to Jewish people another, and not all Jewish people agree no this is another proof of that Israel thinks or the, rather the Zionist thing the whole world owes them something okay and the other thing is that America insists that Israel is a democracy <laughs> right right but I mean the chief rabbinate of Israel I mean that's as high as you can go isn't it? Cutting off ties. They're obviously making a point, same old point, about the Holocaust at the end of the day. And how, how do you think this dynamic may play out over the next few days? Well, I think first off, it's important to note, of course, that there was a tremendous uh, crime committed, and no one would argue that. I, whether we uh, argue the numbers or not, uh, I think that if you believe in free speech, if you believe in uh, democracy, if you believe in opposing opinions being allowed, uh, then, then what's your problem? You know, if yeah. the evidence is there to support you, uh, plenty of people know the truth, what, why would you feel threatened and why would you go to this extent? If they want to do it over that, I'd say uh, the governments of the world should follow the lead of Venezuela and Bolivia and others who have cut off ties with Israel for the slaughter which we know has happened recently, including weapons that are considered uh, uh, illegal during a time of war, white phosphorus and depleted uranium. So, mm. you know, this is a this is a, a you know a, co a, co a conversation uh, about a historical event in the past. Whereas we know something recently has happened, mm -hmm. and Israel uh, should expect that if they want to yeah. cut off ties with uh, with the Pope and uh, his representatives, and maybe others should be. And obviously, cut off ties obviously, as well. it highlighted the Holocaust Day, which happened on Tuesday, and uh, you know this coming two days later. I don't think there seems to be a coincidence between that. I mean, for you, Pirouz, do, do you think the media does tend to be flogging this dead horse, excuse the pun? Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, the reason that uh, the neocons uh, and the access, their access with uh, Ariel Sharon lot okay. has been I have to, successful, I have to hurry up. We literally successful have to merely by uh, gagging the media and right. getting the media to work for them and you see here Daily Telegraph on the right and Guardian yeah. on the left are saying the same thing. Well, well we'll be looking much more closely as usual on a daily basis at <coughs> what is between the headlines on all issues not just Israel. Many thanks to tonight's guests Ken O'Keefe a Gulf War veteran and human rights activist and Piroz Mochahadzadeh an academic. The program will be repeated at 535 GMT. Thank you for watching. Feel free to email comments to us at bth at press tv.co.uk. Join Raza Kazim tomorrow at the same time, but from me, Vuiswa
Bongwana and tonight's PTH team. Have a good night.